A wishes for the cloths of heaven. Had I the heavens embroidered cloths, inwrought with golden and silver light, the blue and the dim and the dark cloths of night and light and the half-light, I would spread the cloths under your feet. But I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly, because you tread on my dreams. Ireland, named for the woman god Eire, has been inhabited for about 10,000 years. The first peoples that came there settled in the Coleraine area of the northeast of the island. The general histories of Ireland say that the first settlers were Firbolg, Tuatha de Danann, and the Celtoi, or the Celts. We now know that our ancestors were much more diverse than that, but the majority of our former language and culture comes from the Celts. We cite their language, their art, their sagas, and their features. Yes, we added more to our mix when the Britannic peoples began to invade Ireland, similar to when the Vikings sailed into our ports. What was left with us is a wonderful concoction of humanity that saved only the best of each newcomer to use as their own. We have ancient monuments, an ancient language, vestiges of art and song and stories. So why did we leave this storied island? It happened for many different reasons. Ireland is a physically small country. The whole of the island would fit inside New York State and leave room to walk around the outside without stepping in Ireland. The first reason for leaving was religious oppression of the people, both Protestant and Catholic, by the British. The next reason for leaving was economic, in that land was very costly, and in order to survive on the land, enough money had to be generated to allow the peasant lessee of the land in food and income that would pay the cost of the land. The oppression began when possession of the land as it was under the Gaelic laws was personal. That changed under the oppressive forces of the British government. The Irish land became one of rental only by absentee landlords with little or no chance to improve. If you did improve the land, the rent went up. Extreme poverty followed. By the mid-1820s, there was already a significant movement of Irish to America and elsewhere. The digging of the first Erie Canal was on the way and jobs were available. Most of those first arrivals were single men without families, but that would change drastically with the onset of Angortamor, the Great Hunger. The Irish peasant was, for the most part, in a very precarious position. 114 separate commissions had reported back to the English government by 1844 that the Irish peasantry was a starving population with an absentee aristocracy, three quarters of the labour force unemployed and the general housing in appalling condition with horrible living standards. Even their Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli was highly concerned about the state of Ireland. So why then was the potato so important? The most popular potato grown in Ireland was the Lumper Potato, a knobby, scabby-looking tuber that grew extremely well and fast. It was considered cattle feed by the British. One could plant the seed potatoes in a ditch that was dug and simply keep adding the dirt from the ditch back over the tubers as they grew. Since the peasant had to work for the landlords, this enabled them to grow a crop with the least amount of work and the greatest output. The potato, when mixed with a little buttermilk, supplied all the basic needs to sustain life. Most adults ate about 10 pounds per day. However, after the main crop of stored potatoes were eaten, the rest needed to be saved for seed. Partial famines happened almost every year in Ireland. The time between April and May, when the seed went in the ground, until August when the potatoes could be harvested, was known as the starving time. 
The poor Irish did scavenge the countryside around their land, but not much was available. The English overseers frequently commented on the Irish scene with green mouths from consuming grass. Why not eat the pig that was raised by many Irish because they were easy to keep? The pig was essential for the Irish tenant farmer to pay his rent for the land. If he didn't pay the rent, then they would be evicted. You could not own more than one pig. They had no choice. What happened then in 1845, 46 and 47 was catastrophic. Overnight, a lush potato crop blackened and rotted from disease. Nothing could be saved. In a country with 7 million people, almost 1,500,000 died either of starvation or sickness brought on by starvation. 3 million people left Ireland for America or elsewhere. Many of them died in coffin ships going to Canada. That type of ship was not allowed into US ports because of overloading. Actually, the British Passenger Act of 1842 expressly forbade that type of ship and overcrowding. Many of the ships were put into reuse that had been built in the late 1700s. The British ships allowed only four feet between decks. There was horrible crowding. One ship, the Virginius of Liverpool, left with 496 passengers. 158 died. 180 were sick when they arrived at Gros Isle, August 4th, 1847. Many of the sick on board died during quarantine. So how did these emaciated, weakened people manage to adapt and survive? Many immigrant settlement areas were like meat grinders. They chewed up many of these immigrants who were so ill-equipped. Buffalo was a place of grit and dust. Those who survived did so with tenacity, bravery and commitment. We dug canals. Some of us were sailors. Many were maids and scrub women. Far too many went to war and showed their new country how brave they were. Others became builders, steelworkers, business owners, scholars, doctors, nurses, and everything in between. When you look at those around you today, they might have four, five, or six generations between them and their immigrant ancestors. Perhaps our modern entertainment, even our jobs may differ from what our ancestors performed. Still, our Irishness prevails. The music, the dance, the stories, all these things bring a shine to our eyes and rhythm to our feet. Listen to the music. See our ancestors' stories portrayed. Watch the traditional dance. Yes, our ancestors worked hard and suffered, but we also laughed and loved and took pride in our culture and its accomplishments. The tradition continues. <laughs>